love you guys. I love everything about this team. As an alum, as a former player, the, the ride that you guys gave Bobcat Nation, alumni, former players, student body, is special. All right, everyone, welcome to the final episode of the Ohio Bobcats Coaches Show with Jeff Bowles. Coach, you guys are coming off your first NCAA tournament appearance since 2012, first appearance and first win. Before we get into how this season was, I just want to ask you, what was this season like as a college basketball coach? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a crazy long season and one like no other. Yeah. And if you, I mean, really look back, I was thinking about the other day, you know, going back to last year when the initial – conference tournament got canceled to no one knowing, okay, it's going to be a two week break, three week break, you know, it turned out to be a month, month, month break. Mm. And, you know, our administration did an awesome job of, you know, health and safety, getting our guys back. So we had, we had some of our guys come back in June. Some of them came back in July and, you know, started our workouts and, you know, then, you know, all the precautions that, you know, we're in place, the spaced out chairs on the sidelines, not being allowed in your locker room, you know, not being allowed in your film room, doing small group workouts, you know, doing the COVID test. I mean, there was just so much involved that was, you know, maybe not normal. And, you know, our guys did a really good job of adjusting, adapting. Um, you know, we went through a seven month period where we, we had no incidents. Mm -hmm. And then February, you know, second, we play at Central Michigan, and then we had our first uh, uh, situation with that and, you know, had multiple positive tests and went through the long 21-day pause and then, you know, came back, played three games in five days, had another positive test, two regular season games canceled. And, you know, the last two weeks have been like a, a fun, magical ride. For people that are on the outside looking in, what was this year like for those student athletes who didn't get to have a normal college experience for most of this year, that they didn't get to see their friends? They, some of them didn't really have in-person classes. They couldn't really see their families when they wanted to. A lot of it was just being together on the basketball court was their most normal thing. For you getting to experience what it was like for them, what can you say about the life of a student athlete for the Ohio University team that you had this year? Yeah, I, mean, I think I can probably speak for male, female, all across the country, every sport. You know, I mean, it was the ultimate sacrifice, self-sacrifice, -sac team sacrifice. And, you know, you had to have a lot of self-discipline. It was the really the opposite of what a college experience should, should be like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked at the beginning of the year, the most mature team, the most disciplined team, you know, the team that gets through this the best probably is going to come out on top. And I think, you know, physically, mentally, probably more so than anything in any other year, because, like you said, you know, you ask these young people to come in, wash their hands, take their temperature, wear their mask, you know, come in, sit, don't go to the locker room, you know, sit six feet away from your uh, teammates, do small workouts. And that two to three hours they were on the court was really their free time. And once it was over, they could go in the locker room, hang out, they had to go home and, you know, do their classwork. So it was, I mean, it was completely different than a normal year and you know you didn't have the team meals you didn't have the team bonding functions you can't go to a movie together you know go to, to a restaurant together you know all that stuff was out the window and um you know just the, the self self-sacrifice that these young people had was unbelievable hey hey How much did it mean to you to see that pay off when they beat Virginia, that those seven months and those eight months of putting in the work and sacrificing their lives, their social lives, and, and having a normal experience, how much did that pay off to beat Virginia and advance in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, it was, it was everything. Because, you know, you would not have been there, they would not have been there if it wasn't for the self-sacrifice. And we had guys like, hey, look, if, if you don't want to do it for you, do it for your teammate. You know, do it for your brothers. And I'm sure... Um, you know, there were times that they wanted to go out and hang out and go, you know, do whatever, socialize, um, but they didn't. And I think that tells you a lot about who they are as, as people. And to, to win that game, 
I mean, it's it's every kid's dream come true to, you know, see Selection Sunday, your name pop up on the screen, play in the tournament, and then you win a game in advance. I mean, there, you know, we made the round of 32. It's the sixth time in the history of Ohio basketball that that's happened. Right. And, you know, that's what makes this group special. You mentioned what it meant to the players, but what did it mean to you as an alum and to other people that I'm sure reached out to you after that win? Yeah, I mean, the, the messages I got, I mean, from classmates when I went to school to my teammates, to former players, to administrators, to Bobcats all throughout the world is, you know, why I took the job. And you know, I, I said it every day I walked in there, I looked at the, at the banners. And my goal was to help these uh, you know, student athletes achieve the experience that I had. And, you know, in the social media world, you know, I always say these, these student athletes have so many distractions. And our big thing was, hey, refocus, right? Because I know I got like 700 messages after the game. And that's not including emails and Instagram, whatever. And, you know, how we handle prosperity. And I thought, you know, we came out pretty good the next day. But it's a memory of a lifetime. And, and I think at the end of the day, like Peter King told me, um, you know, a lot more people are going to remember 62 to 58 than 72 to 58 when it's all said and done in a MAC tournament championship in the instant away run. When you look back on this season, what do you think you learned as a coach navigating through all of this? It was pretty much uncharted waters for everybody. Yeah, basically the resiliency uh, of this group, uh, the perseverance of this group, how to handle adversity, how to handle prosperity. There's so many life lessons that are going to come out of this experience over the last year. Sometimes these, they, they won't have any idea until they go through another experience. But I think just the, the, the resiliency of these guys, of – the sacrifice, the change. You know, I mean, I, there was some times in the, in the summer where I got frustrated because as a coach and a player, you want structure, you want routine, you know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. But there were so many times, hour by hour, day by day, month by month, policies would change, you know, mm -hmm. situations would change, and you'd have to adjust and, and adapt. And I think that's the, probably the biggest thing. I want to focus a little bit on the year coming up. I know this past year just ended, this past season just ended, but you had one senior on the team, Dwight Wilson. He's eligible to come back because the NCAA has that extra year of eligibility because of the coronavirus. They weren't sure how the season was going to go. What do you think will be the future for him and also for Jason Preston? Have you talked to them yet? Or when do you think that discussion might happen? Yeah, you know, we, we came home the other night. I told our guys to get away for two weeks. You know, just it's been such a long year. And, and I was tired. I know they were tired. And, you know, so some of them are going home. Some of them haven't been home since, you know, July when they got on campus. You know, they, mm -hmm. they didn't go home for the Christmas break that we had. And um, so I want those guys to go home, relax. Obviously, we have some academics we got to take care of. And, you know, now that everything's you know, still virtual. They can do it wherever they want. Um, so just kind of regroup, refresh. And we'll do individual meetings, uh, sit down with every player, talk about the future, talk about the season, um, and then kind of go from there. What's the uh, recruiting process like here in the next weeks and months as you look to guys that are going to be incoming freshmen or even guys that are grad seniors that might transfer in? Yeah, it's the, the, the complexion of recruiting has changed drastically. You know, it's still a dead period. Right. And they're not going to change that you know, within the next few months. For people that don't know, the dead period is that college athletes can't come on campus for official visits and come see where they might go to school. And coaches can't go off campus. Correct. So there's, there's still AAU tournaments going to happen, mm -hmm. but we can't do any of that. We'll be able to live stream them. Um, you know, I'm sure some kids will come down on their own just to ch check out campus uh, with their families, but we can't talk to them. Um, so for, for us, it's, it's, you know, different. You know, I think the biggest thing you worry about is your own players, number one. And then, you know, uh, on paper, we have no scholarships next year. We have a young man. Uh, committed to us that we can't talk about yet uh, is signing in April. Um, you know, Dwight Wilson's going to return. And then, you know, if some, someone leaves, then we'll have, you know, scholarships open. Uh, we can kind of figure that out. But the transfer portal, I mean, there's 800 kids in that portal today. And there were 800 last year, a month from now at this time. So, you know, it's, it's definitely changed the recruiting landscape. And you said Dwight Wilson will return next year for an extra year? Yeah, his initial plan was to sit out this year and oh, play okay. this year. Uh, but then once they said that seniors can get their eligibility back, um, he wanted to file an appeal. So we filed the appeal, and it came through that weekend before we played the Illinois tournament. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, the big thing for he and his mom were to graduate. He was going to need 
you know, more than that one year to graduate. And I was fine with that. Uh, but then when the uh, NCAA changed the rule where seniors can get that super senior year back, you know, that changed everything. Is there any rest for you as you uh, get ready to, I guess, start recruiting virtually and then get ready for next season? What what kind of time do you get to take off for, I guess, 2021, 2022 starts? Yeah, you know, I took these last couple of days off, stayed home and spent some time with my family, like like everyone. You know, I, I haven't seen my family in, in a couple of weeks. And, and then next week, my kids' spring break uh, is going on, so we're going to head south for that and kind of relax and enjoy each other and, and then, uh, you know, refresh, regroup, and come back after that. Wind things down here. What do you think that you're going to remember the most about this past season? Yeah, I mean, definitely these last two weeks. Uh, I think the magical run and, and – Seeing Bobcat Nation through through the world, you know how much pride and joy that this this experience brought them. You know means everything. And I told our guys after the game, and you know I'm sure you saw the video; it was pretty emotional. But you know I just told them thank you, you know thank you as a former player, as an alum, um, you know for bringing me on this ride because you know it was special. And what they went through and and seeing them experience it, you know as a coach, you know means everything. And and, you know, one through 15, you know, it, it's tough to win. It's hard to win. And the, everyone accepted their roles. Our bench, you know, there were guys that didn't play that were just as impactful as Jason Preston, you know, Ben Roderick, Ben Vanderplas, those guys, because of their energy and juice that they brought on a daily basis. And that's tough. But, uh, you know, JP would look over before every game and every half. Those guys would be over there waving their towels and, and uh, you know, the energy. The uh, arenas weren't full, so they, they brought the energy. It's one thing to bring a team together, which you did throughout the season, despite the circumstances. And then collectively, you guys brought the entire town of Athens and the entire university together. So I know a lot of alums really enjoyed this ride throughout the season. It's, it's been a pleasure to see you guys grow as a team and, and make it this far and, and hopefully more success in the future for you, Coach. No, I appreciate everything you do, Justin. And you know, we're really looking forward to next year. Um, you know, obviously the outcome might not be the same, but, you know, it's going to be another fun, special team. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting the student body back, you know, the fans back, the cheerleaders, the dance team, the band, you know, just that atmosphere in the convo because next year the convo is going to be rocking. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that too. Thanks for your time throughout this year, coach, and uh, uh, take some time off. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Justin. All right. Take care.